Hey, welcome everybody to the Reloom live stream. I am your host, Josh Lowe, and with me on today's stream is the man, the legend, Adam Mura. Give it up. Hey guys. <laughs> awesome. So glad to see you guys here. So in today's episode, we are going to dive deep into what makes a world-class website. Uh, Adam spent many, many, many hours studying hundreds of websites, and we have the privilege for him to share his process. So, so who's this for? It's going to mainly appeal for uh, designers and marketers in freelance and startup environments. But, you know, for all those devs who want to learn more about design, this one's for you. Uh, before we start, let's welcome the crowd. All right. So we have Melissa in the house. What's up, Scott? Peter, welcome. We have Kevin. We have how many people? We got 29 people. This is awesome. Shar, welcome. Lucas, my friend, welcome to the stream. We have Flo, Phantom, Aaron Rodriguez from Vancouver. Hey, tell, tell me where you guys are at. What city? Uh, own Graphics, welcome. Hopefully, Maria is here as well. I think that was an older comment. We have Thanks, Ada, Jeremy, Mark, welcome. Alex, Sean, man, everyone's here. It's a good party. Jordan, who else? Okay, Kevin. Right on, guys. Good stuff. Um, nice. We're getting some around the world. This yeah. We have people from New Jersey, Adamstown, Pitcairn Islands. I don't even know where that is. Kansas City. Manchester, so good. Victoria, BC, baby. Yeah, I'm from I'm from the island. Represent. Welcome, Alabama, Orlando, Ireland. Okay. Nice. Cool, 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 cool. Welcome, guys. All right, sit back, relax. It's for most of you guys. It's the end of the day. Uh, some of you guys, maybe it's two, three a.m. in Greece or somewhere. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, grab a drink. You're gonna relax. Uh, if you guys have specific questions for us, be sure to start your question with a capital Q. It's easy for me to find, and we'll get back to it. All right, so let's turn down the beats and get right into it. So we are gonna talk about all about design. Um, but before we do that, I was just wondering, Adam, you can share about your background. Is it? Is it all about design? What like where where what was your upbringing? What was your education? Yeah, cool, cool. Uh, no, it isn't all about design. Uh, I guess I started. Uh, I actually started my design career more so as uh, as a business person or studying business. Mm -hmm. uh, with you know, always wanting to to create my own startup or products, and so I guess my background might be a little different to. Um, a lot of designers or web designers that is uh, because yeah I started studying marketing and whilst I was studying marketing I discovered product design um, and so from from studying product design I'm um, sorry from studying marketing and product design mm. I was able to sort of blend skills uh, th those two skills together um, and whilst I was studying I was also you know pursuing startups um, and, and so I guess my background, I would say I was a business entrepreneur first, and then I discovered design and to be honest, design's something that, uh, I've always enjoyed a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I've, t I've learned uh, a lot from design and I've applied that to how I approach business. So, you know, uh, design thinking, um, is, is. Is a, is a way I think and I approach and solve problems because at the end of the day, I believe design is uh, a, a tool for solving problems. So yeah, that's sort of how it how it began. That's awesome. Wow, very well-rounded. So business first, you never, did you always dream about design in the first place or, or it really just kind of came along? Um, I didn't know about it. So um, at school, I did art. So I was, I was like <laughs> sort of creative. Um, and whilst, yeah, whilst I was at school, all I really knew what to do was, uh, was commerce business. It was like, okay. you don't know what to do. You just go into commerce. Okay. I can do finance. Uh, I can do HR marketing. 
uh, operations, which one suits me most? I'm creative, I'll do marketing. That was my thought process. Mm. Uh, so I was pretty naive. Uh, and so that's what I did. I went off and studied marketing, but at the same time, uh, I sort of was interested in um, startups. And so um, I remember I designed my first app. That was the very first thing that I ever designed was, was an app. It was a, a rostering system, um, essentially. And I had to design a web page for it too. I remember designing that and time that the day that I designed like that web page mm. for it and, and the actual application itself, time went really quickly. And, you know, that was a flow, like I experienced the flow state it sounds cheesy, but nice. um, I realized that, wow, I really enjoy this. Um, and so I kept at it. Um, and then over time, I, I, I dug deeper into the design world and the principles um, of design. And, and the frameworks used in design and found, uh, you know, found that I could apply a lot of what I was learning to business and, and provide a skill to my business partners that can help a business grow. So yeah, that okay. sort of explains that will set up, I guess, the topic for today, which is how I define or how Reloom defines mm -hmm. um, what a world-class website is and what world-class design is. Um, so well. good. Melissa's been waiting for a deep dive. So we're going to get at it. And, you know, I think that that sets a good context because, um, you know, design can be approached for a very, very artistic point of view. But it sounds like for you, it's for very practical. Um, and then, you know, with business, there's a strong marketing side. So that'd be really cool. And then myself, too, I come from an engineering background, like the real like civil engineering, not software engineering. So I'm all about systematic uh you know uh an approach and, and making things efficient and i think really that's what Reloom caters to right it's just helping people be productive in their design for sure for yeah. sure um i think s systemizing things thinking within systems and designing mm -hmm. within systems um is definitely what we focus on uh because yeah at the end of the day um there's a lot of principles that apply to uh design, like for instance, um, creating things that are familiar to, to users, um, makes sense, right? So like, there's only really so many ways you can design a nav bar or a footer, for mm -hmm. example. And it's not because, you know, we're just copying what everyone else is doing. It actually serves a purpose of other people of uh, visitors and users of your products or your websites are familiar with that. And therefore they're going to be able to navigate your website much more effectively. So I think that's the power of, of designing in systems, um, or designing using systems. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a whole, whole other topic, I guess. That's why we love Webflow and Reloom. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> world-class websites, let's talk about that. What, um, I mean, like what type of websites are there out there? Like there's marketing, e-commerce portfolios, there's a whole bunch of different stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, can you, yeah, kind of break yeah. that down. Good one, good one. Um, I guess what I want to focus on today is not like a portfolio website. Um, it's more so uh, a company's website. So uh, websites that you you build, you design and build for clients, um, and not necessarily websites that you design for yourself. Because I actually think there's there's almost like two different approaches. I think when I'm designing our portfolio website, when I was designing our portfolio website. Uh, I did focus a little bit more on like flexing uh, our skills as a as a as an agency, and in which which basically also serves the serves the purpose of selling, right? But I think let's focus on like what a company what what like company websites, um, you know what what makes them world class mm -hmm. because i think that that's what that will be more useful to to people listening because i'm sure they design much more client websites than their own portfolio in fact a lot of people struggle to 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 um, ever get around to designing their own uh, portfolio <laughs> yeah, i've noticed <laughs> that's like yeah that's the thing among all our design <laughs> all the designers <laughs> yeah it's yeah. tough the hardest website i ever designed was my portfolio website easily yeah, it's weird. It's such a weird thing. Okay, so um, what are some criteria? Like, like what, what? How can you break down? Because it's you know it's very subjective, right? Or can 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 it be objective? It is like, subjective. Can you break it yeah, down? yeah, yeah. I I don't 
Okay, so I'm just going to talk from my point of view, right? So there's mm -hmm. no, no one's like define what makes a world-class website, right? Um, but from my point of view, um, a world-class website has f factors or variables within it. Mm -hmm. And the most important factor is that it's high converting, right? Our job as a designer, as designers and marketers is, and, and web developers too, is is not to make art or impress other designers and and that's fine if if that's if that brings enjoyment i think it's part of the process but what's most important is to create something with intent to solve a problem mm -hmm. and so what's a website a marketing website's problem that it's trying to solve is it's trying to convert a visitor into a customer mm. or marketing websites also try to um help existing customers solve problems as well and, and communicate information that solves those problems or provides value. So being clear about the goals of a website, which is the primary goals conversion, mm -hmm. I think a world-class website is high converting, right? How, how do you know whether a website's high converting or not? We can dive into that um, later. Right. But I think another, another thing that I've found or I would define as, as part of being a world-class website is that it's scalable. So it can grow over time. It mm -hmm. can have teams um, adding to and collaborating. Uh, it can be uh, tested in a scalable way. Uh, I think the- Like, like think baking when, in modularity and like components or- Correct, or, correct. Yeah, okay. Yes, correct. Because I think, I think this links back to to building websites module, uh, what's the word? Like you like using modules, I guess, or components, um, because I think the more you can do that, the, the easier it is to, to A-B test. The, the easier it is to grow and evolve that website and have other people contribute to that website in your team. Um, and so I think good websites are simple and, and that enables them to be scalable, which goes to my next point, which I think world-class websites are simple and clean. They're not, they're not gimmicky. They're not overwhelming. They're mm. easy to understand that they're like effortless almost to consume, you know, they don't overwhelm you and they communicate a message because they're simple and clean. Okay. Um, but that can be boring, right? So I also think another factor would be that it's memorable or it's aesthetically unique mm -hmm. and you can achieve simple, clean and aesthetically unique. And, and there are ways of doing that. Um, but I think that combination is really effective. Um, and, and we'll show examples of, of that to make the definition, I guess, right. uh, yeah. easier to understand. Um, and then naturally, if you do those things, your website's likely to be high performing, it's likely to be fast, uh, SEO friendly, accessible. Uh, and then lastly, I think what's often missing and designers don't think about enough is great copywriting. Like when you think about a website, it's mainly just text. Like 80% mm -hmm. of a website is text. So that just shows the importance of typography mm -hmm. and, and your choice of typography, but also the, the words and the language that you use. You know, copywriting is such a great skill to have as a designer. Yes. And yes, it's, sure. it, it's, it's time consuming, but like, what I've found is it's just part of the process. And I actually find it, if you do sort of get more deeper into that process of copywriting, you'll find that clients will, you won't have to wait around for clients as much to, to give you copy. Um, yeah, because I know that's sure. a huge pain point. Like it's like the, the biggest like bottleneck in all projects is the copy. Mm -hmm. um, and so what I found to help with that is I've sort of like learned copywriting and a lot of the time I'll just write the copy and if they want to change it, cool, you can change it once we publish the site, yeah. but here, here's decent copy that you can run with for now. Um, and you know, sometimes I can't write the copy cause I just don't understand the product cause it's mm -hmm. too technical or it's, it's just outside of my knowledge and that's okay. But I, at least I can provide like guidelines for them and that just makes that process a lot quicker. So cool. good copywriting is, is essential. It's, it's not design, but it's so, it's so related to design 
And when you think about design as solving a problem, mm -hmm. it is design. Copywriting is design in a way, if, if you think yeah. about it the way I do. Well, I think you really cover a good point because like that is a huge bottleneck for most designers, especially yeah, waiting from clients to get all the copy. They may not understand the background, but I think, yeah, I think it's a good tip that you said, like at least fill it in and suggest what you think would be good. At least they're like good placeholders. A lot better than Lorem Ipsum, right? And so, <laughs> yeah. yeah, not gonna lie, I do rely on Lorem Ipsum from time to time for sure. Yeah. Um, but I think yeah, going that extra mile and saying, this is sort of what how we should frame this, or this is how we should tell the story, mm -hmm. uh, is 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 uh, beneficial in um in improving that process with clients. Cool. Okay. Awesome. I want to summarize that. So the criteria we have is high converting scalable simple and clean aesthetically unique and high performing so five yeah and good so, copy <laughs> and good yeah good copy so with that oh it did, and i guess accessibility right i think uh you touched on that of course yeah accessibility yeah. of course yeah all right should we just jump right into it and cover some examples yeah yeah sure sure so i guess i guess we can start from like where i even like why why we're sharing examples sure. and um also like where i do get inspiration from so i think a core part of uh, my design process or it, it's it is a core part of my design process is that i'm constantly looking for uh good design inspiration uh, and i call it consuming good design because i believe that good design requires good taste and good taste requires consuming good design Right. So mm. in order to understand or set a bar for yourself to aim to, you need to have good references, good points of reference that you can aspire to and learn from. Mm -hmm. And so the best, the best approach that I take is I visit websites, uh, that basically display the best web website design or web design on the internet, right? That's what they claim they, that they share. And my favorite of the lot is a, is um, a website called siteinspire.com. I, I have looked at other websites. Um, you know, I've been recommended other websites to look at, but with siteinspire.com, it doesn't have the best design. It's not, you would probably go on it and you'd be like, oh, this looks basic. But the guy that curates that is very particular and has really good taste. And so I've always trusted that basically he doesn't just let anything on that go on that website. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm looking at, I know that I'm looking at good design, like 80% of the time I'm looking at websites on there. I know that they're good. And I've been on other websites where I've clicked through and I've thought, eh, uh, this website's sort of not a good representation of good design, but Science File na nails it. So I, I, I go on this like at least, at least once a fortnight to mm. go through. Another thing that I do is I've collected a list of what I call beautiful websites, which we use uh, internally mm -hmm. as reference points for our work and for our components as well as part of the Reeling Library. And so I can share that link with you guys. Okay. Um, and basically, it's a collection that I maintain myself. Um, and and so that's the I refer uh, to notion. those. That's the notion one. Yeah, that's the notion. I, I've shared it on Twitter before, but yeah, that's what we use. Yeah, yeah. So that, um, and that they, yeah. these are like essentially my favorite websites at the moment and they change regularly. I mean, a good website does change because they're constantly testing. Webflow uh, but party. I've built, yeah, is. I've built that one before uh, on the, on the Webflow party. Um, but yeah, so we can, we can jump into a few of these and I can explain to you why I think these are so great and you can, yeah. We can talk about that, but I think just back to my point, mm -hmm. um, putting these sort of habits in place, um, to, to constantly look for design inspiration and be inspired by, by, by other designers and like good quality top work, um, I think is very important. Um, and there's, there's ways to find those, those, uh, those inspirations. So. We can we can jump into one of my favorites at the moment, sure. um, which is probably Gumroad website. I can explain to you why I love this so much. Okay. 
This is so okay, cool. so yeah, this website's awesome. I'm also a big fan of Gumroad. Um, so I, I like, I love, I love the company. I think it's cool what, what they're doing. I think the founders really, really awesome as well. But what I like about this website is that it ticks all the boxes in terms of we know that Gumroad is a successful company, so we know it's it, it's high converting. It does a really good job at communicating what Gumroad is about. In fact, you can just look at the hero section and it explains it all to you, right? So, so I think if you look at this website, the copies, it's, it's simple. There's no like jargon. Uh, it's in plain English and it's short and sweet, right? So he's, they've done the hard work to um, simplify this, this copy for you. Um, I think another thing is it's simple and clean, yet it's aesthetically unique. It's memorable. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen a website that looks like this? I, I personally haven't. I think, I think it's very unique and it stands out. Yeah, and colors. I think, they pop. oh, the colors, oh, the colors are awesome, right? But do you notice that there's no, nothing amazing here in terms of like animations or interactions? They've just nailed the, 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 the foundational elements of uh, basically good typography or like typography that fits their brand, mm -hmm. good use of color, consistency. Mm -hmm. It's super consistent. Everything feels co like it comes together quite well. Um, and it's memorable. Like it's, it's aesthetically unique. Um, so yeah, one of my favorite websites definitely at the moment, um, is this, and I think they have adopted a lot of things that can on this website that help them convert. And so, you know, they use testimonials, but the way they use their testimonials is, is effective. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, I think the animations are, are si like simple, very simple. It's the parallax effect, but it's so powerful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's, it's super quick. Um, it's not like buggy or anything. Um, yeah. And, and okay, go up, go up. Let's just look at their testimonials, for example, here, mm -hmm. like from a, um, from a like psychology, uh, psychology point of view or marketing point of view, if you go and look through their, these testimonials, you actually find that these are people that have larger followings, right? And mm -hmm. so it's, it's a good strategy for a testimonial to, to include people that have influence because that just brings way more believability and weight to your um to to your testimonial so they have a few people here that are uh, well known um like uh that guy there i, f I forgot his name <laughs> go back this guy uh daniel. yeah yeah he's awesome daniel yeah he's awesome he's he's got a, he's got quite a big following on twitter and you know anyway point i'm trying to make is that they're using people of influence to influence you this is just one little thing that they do on this website that uh that triggers you to to want to to use it. Um, so it's all about studying these these things um, and then adopting it to to your projects. Uh, and that's just one example because we're scrolling by. Dan saying, I think we should get Adam to do a live build of Gumroad using Reloom. Ooh, all challenge, that challenge. Tricky. Yeah, <laughs> that 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 would be good. Uh, actually, I think that would be good because. Um, you probably don't think that the components could morph into this, but they could. Yeah, that would be awesome. So good. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Should we jump into the, the next one? Yeah, okay. let's go to the next one. Uh, we I have... think the next one's... You want Stripe? We have Stripe or Yeah, Kona. I think the next one's... It, this is like one of the greatest websites, I reckon. At, okay, can I moment, say but... one thing? Yeah. Yeah, the yeah, go The biggest go. thing that bugs me is... For some reason, the colors are like over the text. And am I the only one that like noticed that? Was that intentional? Like, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm yeah. Yeah. I know what you mean. It. Like, it's, it's like a big itch you want to scratch. <laughs> yeah. So what? So, okay. So you think it's too distracting to the text? Yeah. I, I think the text should be front, like up front and center. Like the, the layering should be up. And I feel like it's underneath the gradient and that's kind of off. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I think what I think about it is that it's it's so it's unique, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's it's capturing, it's eye capturing. I do, I do. It it does sort of distract me from from what the text says, but the text has a bold enough font there 
mm-hmm. that it can it can deal with that. If it was a thinner font, it would get uh, washed out easily. Mm-hmm. But it's their choice of font here that sort of makes it uh, makes it good. Um, but what I think this is a this website's kind of old old in terms of mm-hmm. web web. Uh, I'd say it's probably like a few years old. But it's funny because like what they've done here, especially with that hero section, a lot of people have copied. Um, and so, you know, you mm. can probably look at this now and be like, oh, it's not that unique. But at the time it was like, oh, that's sick. Like that's very different. Mm. What I like about Stripe is that it's a scalable website. You know, um, they, they, it's a huge website. So if you want inspiration on how to lay out like a, a large website um, with lots of content, then I think this is a website you can study and, and learn how they do that. Um, one thing that I learned on a project, we had a project where um, we had an existing client that had an existing website and there was a, it was a large Webflow website mm-hmm. and they wanted to redesign it. And, you know, we could, we could like redesign the whole thing at once and that would take like a long time to do before we'd have the refresh. Right. Or we could redesign a couple of pages um, and then like slowly over time, release those pages. So just redesign the home page and then slowly over time, release those pages. Mm. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I've observed that's how Stripe released a new design. So Stripe didn't just like rebuild all their or redesign all their pages at once. They slowly introduced a new, uh, design language over time and they did that incrementally and so we took that approach and it it worked really well and the client was able to get like a lot out of the design process a lot sooner because let's be honest the home page is the most important page anyway mm-hmm. and that's what we started with so yeah these are sort of things that you can learn from 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 studying these uh these websites now i just want to caveat that i have no inside information on any of these <laughs> any of these companies uh that that yeah, all, all the designers, I don't even know. I'm sure Stripe has an internal team that's designed this. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, I think looking at these as inspiration, you can, you can learn a lot. So that's why I like Stripe. I like Stripe's, uh, yeah, the information architecture is really good. So Mike says, what are some of the largest brand name world-class sites that use Webflow? Um, and then have you heard of any that use the Reloom library? <clears throat> Oh, good question. Uh, um, huh. One day, hey? <laughs> okay, so the largest that use Webflow, I, I'm not sure. I think it'll be on the website, Webflow website. Um, mm-hmm. We have, I mean, we we know of a few companies that are transitioning to Webflow. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I, don't, I can't really speak. Like, they're in the process of that. I can't really speak to that yet. But, I mean, you could go on the Webflow website. I'm sure their case studies would be tug, would be about the biggest companies. Like Latisse, um, I'm thinking Tech Tech World. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, who recently? I think Ramp. I mean, Ramp's a pretty big company. They're not they're not huge. Ramp's on Webflow, Ramp.com. Um, I don't know. I think that's a question. I think you can probably find that out on the website. Um, and then biggest client that uses Reloom. I actually don't know. It'd be interesting mm. to know that. All right, it'd guys. be very interesting to know. Those that. watching, make sure you reach out to Adam. <laughs> Yeah, let us know if you know of, of any. Okay. Um, okay. This is okay, so, this website. Like the video alone is so powerful. Yeah, yeah. This one's a bit different. Not like a huge tech company. Mm-hmm. Um, I Okay, so I I like this because I love olive oil. I'm Italian. It's like, <laughs> like I instantly was like, I would have this product. Uh, but <laughs> what I really like about this website is the, it's just very unique, uh, the branding, and it does a really good job at oh nice at se- at selling. It it, it, sell- it sold me on olive oil, right? But see that whole thing that just happened. Yeah. This website is an example of a website that has added uh, an element of delight. Of mm-hmm. it, it's it's memorable. However, it doesn't go over the top. It it's not like there's shit flying out here and there, like from every direction it just it's kind of subtle oh yeah that's interesting mm-hmm. i mean it's not amazing but it's sort of memorable mm-hmm. um and i think having like just one thing on your website that 
that is that memorable moment mm -hmm. is, is I think the secret formula. Having too many of that is overkill, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. Um, Even this, they're all static yeah. here. So, but the layouts, you know, they're breaking the the box. Yeah, they're breaking the rules. Yeah, they're break. breaking the rules. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I just think, I just think, um, like, even the typography is so unique, like, mm -hmm. so unique. You'd almost think it wouldn't work, but it does. Oh, so yeah, this, this is a, this is very subtle here. Mm. Yeah, that's nice. Love the pop of colors. Yeah, the pop of colors, awesome. Um, yeah, it's unique. It, it's non-traditional, like they're tapping into a market that would be quite an old traditional market, right? Mm -hmm. Food products and they and they and they're bringing something new and fresh and on brand. And I just I just think they nail it. So good. Um, glog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that that's why I like this website. I think they just nail the the fundamentals of good design. Mm -hmm. Um and and at the end of the day they have sold me on wanting to get this olive oil. So props to them. They've done a, they've, that's good design in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. I want to buy some now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So I'm wondering, uh, how you guys came to develop like the Reloom brand or at least the website, like what was that process? Did what kind of inspirations did you take from other websites? Yeah. Okay. Good question. Um, I guess, I guess again, starting from, uh, starting from just like inspiration. So collecting that inspiration, mm -hmm. uh, and there are elements. Okay. So without being too prescriptive, because I don't think there's like, you do this, you do that equals this, like in design, like the creative process, there's, you're tapping into like, your subconscious mind, you're tapping into things often like that you don't quite understand or can't articulate mm -hmm. um, without s sounding too, you know, uh, fluffy, but <laughs> it's true, right? So I can't just be like, we did this and then we did this, we did this. Um, however, I do think about it a lot. Like how can I articulate my process? And so with the Reloom brand, we, basically had like five sources or, or six sources of inspiration mm -hmm. um, of just websites that I was like, that looks awesome. That does a really good job at, at, at um, basically providing like a nice unique design. And that's going to be my inspiration. And so I have like, uh, I could probably name like four or five websites that we used as inspiration. Right. And we just took the best elements of those websites and combine them together. So literally like stealing some of those ideas and combining them together mm -hmm. to form, to form like a, a completely new, unique thing. Um, and so I guess I, I can, I can talk about like what inspired us and like where exactly it, it inspired us. Sure. Yeah. I just want to comment a bit, like for me, just you know, fresh eyes, some of the elements that kind of stick out and make it unique is obviously you got this gradient going on. These colors are, you know, that's very iconic and you only chose like two with uh, yeah, like the orange and the purple. Um, mm. Love the font you guys have. I love how it's um, just one single font, but you can use in a header or a heading as well as the body text. But the majority of your text is very large. So it's very legible, very easy. And then I'm also noticing this pattern of like this monochromatic, like simple white and black feel also with like a simple stroke. So I, I love that's kind of like your vibe. I love that again with the stroke outlines, very simple, but very clean. So it's got like that minimalistic um, aesthetic. So with that, let's look at some of the um, inspiration. Yeah, yeah. I think what you're touching upon there mm -hmm. um, is consistency. Um, mm -hmm. I think consistency is super important. So the lines and the way we, we adopt how we outline things, you can see like I've, I've literally taken the same approach to every single component on mm -hmm. this website. And like, I don't know, I'm, I'm not overly stoked about this website, but 
people seem to like it. And it, at the time, it, it did help our business a lot. So, um, yeah, this is a bit different. I've tried to make it a little bit different, but also make it feel like Reloom. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because the components uh, are similar, but the, you didn't decide to go for the um, the strokes and every stroke outlines. No, yeah. No. Well, the reason, do you want to know the reason? Yeah. So the reason why I haven't is because I'm like those, those components pop up a lot. Like it'd be too overwhelming if every mm. single component had a black outline. So it's taking a different approach, I guess. It's a different type of website. Right. Um, yeah. You don't want to overwhelm them. You just want a nice clean. No. Yeah. Exactly. Backdrop. Exactly. Like people are going to be looking at this page a lot, whereas mm. the Reloom landing page for our agency people are going to be uh arriving there and like not spending all that much time there so it needs to really like shout at you so right. i guess yeah that but yeah i guess the consistency but where we actually got that design from the black and white with that outline mm -hmm. is this figma so if you go to figma you'll see that figma.com does yeah. the exact same thing so it's just like taking one element from figma i'm not copying everything from figma just one element from Figma, that's all. And and even our buttons, completely Figma-like inspired. Um, and that's okay. Can't. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, go ahead. What did you say? I was just saying I, I can't log into Figma because every time I do, it actually logs me into the uh, the app itself and I can't go to the marketing side. All right, yeah. I'm sure if you're, yeah. if you, yeah, I get the same thing, but it, yeah. essentially Figma does the exact same thing that we've done here. Um, gotcha. which is also sort of like a, there's familiar, familiarity with mm -hmm. that aesthetic. Right. Um, but yeah, if, even the blur effect, like I could, that blur effect, I can show you where, where I was inspired. I think I was inspired by Jordan Hughes on one of his, uh, on his, um, Webflow website. Yeah. Yeah. This, this one. one. Yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. seeing that was like the first time I saw so this blur good. effect. Right. Shout out to Jordan for inspiring me but um nice. i was like yeah that's sick um and and then i i follow these guys on dribble who are awesome they're called heartbeat agency um okay. so if you can dribble that so, yeah yeah that okay these guys are awesome so these guys were doing the blur effect like three years ago before anyone was doing blur effect now it's like everywhere which is good i guess um because it looks awesome but these guys are trendsetters for sure. They're all, their website's sort oh, of... Oh, a different not, website now. Yeah, their website's on... No offense, guys, uh, but I'm sure they're not listening. But <laughs> their their Dribble account is fire. Like, it's it's awesome. Go to go to um, their... It says Vladimir for Heartbeat. Yep. Under Vladimir? So click, okay. Yeah, Vladimir's good. He's, one, he's, he's awesome. These guys, I love their work. Um, Ooh, clean. Because... Yeah, I think they, nice they're trendsetters for sure. Like they do something and then like you'll see like a year later, everyone's doing the same thing. They're ahead of the mm. curve um, or they yeah. have been ahead of the curve for some time. So yeah, I think I saw their their work and I was like, I'm going to use the, the Gaussian blur um, on, on Reloom. So again, just trying to borrow from multiple different references and bring it all together. Gotcha. Okay, cool. And then there's this. I love this website actually. Basic. Yeah, Basic's website's cool. But you got. They, I guess this is where the gray comes from, or like. Uh, yeah, yeah. Black and gray. It was sort of different before. Um, honestly, how they talk and how they like lay out like their content, I got a lot of inspiration from. And then mm -hmm. the 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 grainy. This is more like, it's like noise that like, it's like animated. Ours is more, sta ours is static. But that was the first time I had seen that effect. Um, I think Timothy Ricks actually designed a website, the Wizardry website that had that effect too. And I was like, that's cool. But yeah, these guys inspired like basically how to talk and like layout. These guys are huge, right? So we're, we're not the same. We're not the same. And we weren't the same at the time. But I, I definitely appreciate that. Yeah, that, see, that looks like Reload. Oh, yeah, <laughs> right. Very that was cool. huge inspiration, yeah. So do you think this would be a bit, uh, what are the, like the criteria, like 
is it scalable because it's kind of out of the out of the grid no no right okay so this is more no. like catchy um, these are concepts these are like um these so the only thing you should ever get from dribble in my opinion mm -hmm. is like aesthetic stuff never look at like ux because ux on dribble these guys like when you think about it it's like the instagram for designers so mm -hmm. they're just optimizing for ui like they're just optimizing for um making shit look good right they're not optimizing for user experience because they don't need to so right. i only get aesthetic aesthetic uh inspiration from there from right from dribble from dribble okay. from Got dribble it. But like some of these layouts, they're not practical. Like if you were to build a website using some of these layouts, yeah. it, it would just be like a nightmare. There is that crazy one by Timothy Rex where there's a DJ board and you can like, he's got a whole bunch of code going on. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah. He, he takes it to another level. Props to Timothy. He's, he's awesome. So this was yes. another inspiration. What was, uh, where did you kind of? Yeah, yeah. Pull I from? just took one element. I guess the purpose of this is like, just one thing I really liked about this website. Keep scrolling, let's pause. Yeah. See like the background, go up, go up. See just like the back, I just really like those illustrations. See those illustrations? Oh, these Sorry, ones? Like, just, yeah, no, the, to the right, like the ones that are like, yeah, these, the one, the two, yeah, these, those okay. two. Those two, they look very similar to the illustrations we put on our timeline on our website. Uh, I was just like, that looks see. sick. Um, so if right. you go, if you go look at Figma and scroll, like I, I got okay. inspired by yeah. those. Obviously, nowhere near as cool. Yeah. But, but it was inspiration. I was like, oh, I really like how they've done that. Well, um, listen up here. <laughs> I'm not gonna try that again. Yeah, cool. I see that. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And so, I mean, I can share my, oh, this, okay. So what inspired me about this website, Clint, is that this proved that you can make a one page website. Awesome. Like for your agency. Mm -hmm. So this website is a one pager and, you know, Dan, I was working on this, on the, on the, on the new real room website. And Dan was like, like, is it, is it done yet? I'm like, oh no, I've got like four more pages to do. And he's like, man are you serious like let's let's come on let's just launch with one page i was yeah. like oh i can't launch with one page and then i found this website i was like you know what these guys have nailed it on one page this is possible right. let's do it okay let's talk about that like um because if it's a one page there's i mean we're talking about seo right because usually for seo you want to have multiple pages so you can yeah you know capture more you know, words and th things like that. So what's the, the strategy behind right. that? Is there a dis huge disadvantage to just have a giant one pager? Um, I, I don't think there is. I just think it's, it can be a lot to put on a single page. And I just feel like these guys have just put what's necessary um, on a page. Now, in terms of SEO, yeah, that's all good. Maybe you want to create more pages about the time that we were launching this. Mm. Uh, we just needed something out there. Like one page was enough for us to convert clients mm. um, they didn't need to know anything else they just needed to know what literally the most important thing they need to know is your portfolio items like that's right. all it, it, now we're talking client we're, now we're talking like uh agency websites but uh yeah that that's the most important thing uh, so this sort of showed that website sort of showed that yeah okay uh, you can fit everything on a one page and convert a customer, uh, convert a visitor into a customer, mm. uh, just off one page. It's possible. That's what it sort of showed, showed us. And it's true. It was possible. We still have just one page on our website. Nice. Really? Oh, actually, no, that's a lie. We have various landing pages, but they sort of just act as one page. Awesome. Okay. Uh, so I was wondering if we can take it here. Wow. We're already at 45 minutes in. That's great. Time flies when you're looking at good design. Where do you want? Where do you want to take this? Should we just ask, uh, field some questions here? Um, do we want to share more about like your personal process of you know, getting inspiration, gathering it, and then sorting it, and using Figma and all that stuff? Yeah, yeah. I guess I can. I can talk to that, and maybe even we can talk to. I don't know. I did a bit of a 
Reelum did a bit of a tweet storm about like little tips. Maybe we could go through that if if anyone's interested. Mm -hmm. um, like things that you can add to a to a website um, to make it high, like to improve conversions. Mm -hmm. um, but just want to sort of reiterate. I mean, not reiterate. Just sort of state something. Um, and that is like the design process is is not so linear. Like I was saying. It isn't like you just need five references and then bring them together. It's not that simple. And um, I think if you were to look at my web, uh, my Figma file, you would see what absolute mess it is. It's actually kind of representative, representative of the creative process or my creative process. Um, and that ideas are never finished in Figma. Like that's something that I really mm. believe in as Webflow developers. Like it's never finished in Figma. And sometimes it has to be because you, you have a designer that's handing over to a developer. But if you're designing and developing a website, like try not to just like leave your ideas and your design at Figma, like at, at the Figma level, like try and improve them on Webflow because designing for Figma and designing for web on Webflow are very different things. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, what do you think about that, Josh? It's well, what's really helping is actually your Figma file, the Reloom library on Figma. I was actually, I, I literally put together two websites yesterday, last night, um, I brought it to like zero to 60%. Um, I got like the home page and then like a blog page down and that really, really helped. Um, I think just more for content placement first before even going into the copy and all that, but just structuring like sections and actually, yeah, starting with the site map. And then from there I'll, I'll know like which components I'll slide in. Um, so it really, really helps. But if I didn't have that, yeah, I think it would take a long time for sure. Oh, nice. That's yeah. good. That's good to hear. Yeah. I think the, yeah, I think the upside of that Figma file as well is just getting started. Like, like just wireframing, like putting like components together and be like, oh, yeah, this would be a good flow. And then like filling out, I think mm -hmm. the wireframing process, I'm interested to understand how people, uh, how people like go from the wireframe to the actual high fidelity design. Mm -hmm. um, that would be super interesting to know and learn about as well. It's, it's, uh, I usually stop at mid fidelity grayscale in Figma and then I, yeah. I bring it straight to Webflow for high fidelity. Um, Interesting. So it's per like for, for a reloom, it's perfect. So do you, um, do you design like branding concepts? Like, let's say that like you're, yeah. you don't have a brand already for this project. Right. Do you, so do you like have design concepts that you've done separately or? So if a client has, uh, a, working with a brander and they already have a brand guide, then I'll take mm -hmm. that and that's just kind of like the paint. And then I just apply yeah. it to the structure of the wireframes. But yeah. if they don't do that, then I do my own branding process. And then I, what yeah. I do is, um, I shared this on shout out to Floxies. Um, I shared them my branding process from brand to Webflow, but I use this stylescape and I say that's referenced from the future. Um, and what yeah. it is, is just like a really wide pan of, uh, it captures all the typography, colors, the user personas, um, packaging, but and just little elements of um, the web elements like buttons. It's more than a style tile, and it's more than a mood board. So it really encapsulates like the okay. overall brand. But then once you have that and it's approved, then you just like use that to like paint over the website or paint over uh, stationary or or print print collateral and all that stuff. So that's kind of my process. Yeah, nice. Yeah, nice. And and before you like define the actual visual concept, mm -hmm. are you doing like multiple exploration? Like, do you have an exploration period? I do. Yeah, for sure. Um, so it's a translation process from taking a subjective feeling, which like, like, let's say a client wants their brand to be represented as like strong, bold, energetic, but what does that look like? Yeah. So you're taking those subjective words and you're translating it or a feeling subject, translating it to a word. And then from the word I go into, I have these image buckets. It's a whole process. I, we can cover it in a future stream. Um, yeah. and then I go into Pinterest or I guess dribble, and then I would mm. just, I would just like 
copy and paste a whole bunch of stuff that kind of meet those words, those brand attributes. Yeah. Um, and then from there, then that's when I, I use those. It's like gathering ingredients and that takes the longest time, right? Yeah, so it makes it's sense. just curating, collecting all these uh, brand ingredients and then I'll just kind of cook it up and put it and cook it in a very nice stylescape and then I present it to the, uh, the client. Nice. Do you, t do you show the client the exploration up until that point? Uh, the exploration is kind of my, on my end. So, okay. so my work with the client stops at the discovery, which is to kind of, um, pull out all the values and the words from them. Okay. And how do you decide what the values and the words look like? You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, okay. Right. So there's a, a really great exercise that really helps me like create boundaries. So I, it's called a gut test. So, um, I just give them, I put together a 20 slide PowerPoint presentation or a keynote presentation. So it's 20 slides. It plays for five seconds each, each slide just covers a huge variety of different styles from like minimalist to, uh, really, you know, bold brand, like bold colors, very colorful to monochrome, all sorts of stuff. And then they rank them. So when they, when I hit play, they just give score of like one to five or one to 10 and mm. then then that way I can look at their score and I can gauge like, okay, you obviously don't like this style, but you really like this. So it kind of narrows that, uh, it, it cuts down the feedback like significantly. So I roughly know where to work in between. I can tell you, I can tell you have an engineer mind. I love yeah. it. <laughs> it's gotta be That's systematic. So no, I love it. It's <laughs> systematic. It's good. I like that. I think feedback, like getting feedback from clients like that is is super valuable because it's sometimes hard to express like they they're like oh i want it to feel this way but like unless you have something to point at be like what do you think of this um that's when you get like the actual good feedback from the client so yeah. maybe we should do a stream on like um how to actually like sell it's not even sell but like how to like get a client to like like the design because right. i have a theory that it's often not, it's often not how good you are at design. It's how good you are at like s taking the client through a story sure. or through the process. Um, and I think it's all those steps before you get to, Hey, here's the design that, mm -hmm. that helps with them saying, yeah, I really love it. Or mm, can you like, let's do another round of revisions mm -hmm. um, because revisions is the enemy to your business mm -hmm. period. I, it's 100%. not good for, for you. So you, <laughs> you, you want to ensure that clients do not, do not want multiple rounds of revisions. You want to avoid that at all costs. I think charge um, those revisions, got to charge it chart. Yeah, for sure. Charge those revisions. Um, okay. it's, it's a, it's a tricky one. So we, we got some a question here, Adam, how do you draw the line between keeping things simple and going crazy with your layouts? Oh, good one. Um, I value simplicity over crazy layouts. Where do I draw the line? Um, I would, I would draw the line at using, so basically using more simple layouts and having like that one thing that, uh, that is that you really want the message that you want to get across, maybe changing the layout for that one thing, because you want to, you want to draw more attention to that. Um, and so I guess where, where I draw the line is I will like, I'll look at it or I'll put it in front of someone. And if it's too overwhelming or crazy, or it's too chaotic, then I know I need to go back to simplifying it and it's okay to be simple. It's okay to not have crazy layout. So uncommon components is something that we've, we've, we're working on and have released as part of the Realm library. They're, those components I use like very rarely, but I use them for special things that I want to get across. They are the crazy layouts, but for the most part, I'm using very simple layouts. Um, but Hey, that's just me. I feel like I get overwhelmed when I, when I look at a website that doesn't follow like a grid system. Nice. Yeah. Hey, uh, do you think we could give the audience a small little peek of your Figma file and, and how you kind of throw it together or 
maybe we can leave that it's just people have been sticking yeah, around for I'm uh sure. to the almost the hour so it'd be nice to kind of reward them give them something there. i'll i'll uh, pick uh, up some questions as you prep that uh I find that I need to learn auto layout more to find Figma file useful. Been finding it hard to edit wireframes. Yeah, for sure. I think that if, I mean Agreed. If that is it is such a powerful uh, feature. But yeah, you got to know how to how to use it for sure. Uh, yeah, I I one hundred percent agree with that. Um, I did a, I did a video on how to like un un unbind the auto layout mm -hmm. for 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 web design. I don't think it's that useful personally. You like you're using Figma so that you can like throw stuff around and like mm -hmm. it's not perfect. It doesn't need to be perfect, particularly for if you're using Realm library components. So uh, like you, it doesn't need to be pixel perfect in Figma. Um, it just needs to come together and you're using Figma because it's frictionless. Mm -hmm. All that like gets sorted out when you jump into Webflow. Yeah, really Alessa like says she feels the same way. She started practicing with the real components, not uh, not fluent with it. Just suggest to keep at it, and you'll understand in no time. Yeah, that's a that's good that's good advice, Mel. I mean, once it once you learn Figma, it does the auto layout feature it does click, but I feel like it's restrictive. That's just my personal opinion. Um, for web design, that is. I'm now fluid is what I meant. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, Melissa. Melissa, I would love to see your process. That would be so good. So great. Uh, uh, seems like people are hungry for process. So a future stream. Fantastic. For sure. Uh, I think everyone has their own process too. So I think we could get like multiple mm -hmm. people sharing process. That would be awesome. Yeah, Maria's pointing out she's the one that brought me over to Floxy, so shout out to her. Um, that was a very, very high level, but yeah, if you guys want to really dive into it, let us know. Like, I'm all about systematic processes and things like that. Okay, can we get a little sneak peek? Okay. At, uh, yeah, hopefully I don't have anything that's too... Let's see here. <laughs> okay, we good? Let's... You guys can be severely underwhelmed. But nice. I guess this is this is essentially like this is essentially what my what my Figma file looks like. It's not neat at all, uh, and this sort good. of yeah, but it's absolute chaos, and it doesn't even look like what it ended up being. Um, mm. So essentially, um, again, I'm the only person working on this project. If I was to work with like if I knew I was handing it over to a developer, I would like tidy up my stuff like. Mm. So this is like a unique case of I'm designing and developing um, and therefore I don't need to like have a neat uh, Figma file. But anyway, this was the, this is sort of how I was thinking about um, the, the original design. And as you can see, it changed a fair bit. Um, oh, like right. this is what it looked like. Right. Very and cool. that's because once I got into Webflow, oh, I wow. realized, I realized that these ideas that I had in Figma mm -hmm. were, were they, they failed in Webflow. Like they just didn't work. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I had this idea of transitioning to this like orange and like it just, oh. it, it just didn't work and it didn't feel right once I actually had put it into Webflow. On top of that, like, like I originally had the idea of having like the blur like on all corners. Yep. And then I accidentally stumbled upon the idea of like, it following your cursor. Mm. Um, so I think I forgot what I was doing. I was trying to achieve something else and I was, I accidentally like discovered, Oh, actually it would be cool if I could do that. Um, and so I guess that's a sort of, that's the realities of the design process. And this is why I say right. like, if you're designing and building on Webflow, like don't let Figma be the, 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 the end point for your creative ideas. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you'll figure that out intuitively or lots of you already know that. So uh, I guess that's, that's become obvious to me that like sometimes I, at this point, I like, if you were to see the Realm Library website, I, I design like 20% of it on Figma mm -hmm. and then I just design the rest on Webflow. Is it because you're already working in a grid, um, especially Realm Library, it's all like components uh, or sorry, collections. And so it's just easier to actually like fill, use the CMS 
and then design from there and then tweak that that one template card and things like that yeah i i, th I think it's that um again this this only works for personal projects mm -hmm. wouldn't recommend for clients uh, for client projects um this worked because going back to my point about figma figma you're you're like moving vectors around the screen mm. webflow you're like you're building and coding at the same time so you're able the feedback loops you get from like trialing ideas on webflow is much tighter like you know that if it works on webflow that's the end product you can you're almost like assuming things are going to work on figma until you get into webflow and realize that it doesn't work or like it doesn't come come off as as good as you thought it would come off um and so i think that's the beauty of workflow wipe so like uh why i think it's like got so much potential is that when you're designing and developing at the same time you're you you're almost like tapping into something that uh you, you don't tap into do, through figma um and so a lot of ideas can can come from from webflow not not from figma but it really seems like you've the point in which you jumped from Figma to Webflow, it's it's already like almost done. Like it's super high fidelity. And then from there, mm -hmm. you kind of almost take it to Webflow to explore the interactions. And then you you have happy accidents and then you discover certain things. <laughs> exactly. Happy accidents. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly right. I, like I have a good idea of the, the like brand and aesthetic, like yeah. and the elements. It's now like, how can I, yeah, like you're saying, use interactions and, and, and bring that. Um, so good. Yeah. Uh, Mark is wondering mobile. Do you ever design a mobile version in, uh, in Figma? Do I ever design mobile? Uh, no, I, 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 I do actually, but I, I never start with mobile. Um, I start with, with desktop. Yeah. That's a whole, like, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, argument or topic topic of uh people prefer either starting mobile first or uh i usually first. don't if it was yeah. if i knew i was getting a lot of traffic for mobile i would treat that very differently i would mm -hmm. like if it was like a mobile driven thing i would like d definitely design an experience just for mobile okay. but for reloom it's like a lot of clients are like a lot of people are discovering it on their desktop Mm -hmm. Reloom library is like a desktop thing. Like mm -hmm. no one's going to be going on their, on their mobile. So like I start with, with, uh, desktop, but for clients, for the most part, what I've observed is that traffic is like, I'd say 50, 50, okay. um, maybe it skews towards mobile more, but I can still achieve a decent, a very, very decent mobile design. If I start with, with desktop, cause desktop is just, there's so much more you can do on desktop and then Mobile's fun because it's all about just like taking, mo removing things and taking them away. Mm -hmm. And so I think Webflow is set up to, to follow that process. And I, I just think it makes sense. You still get a decent outcome for mobile, in my opinion. Right. Pat saying, thank you so much for sharing what's under the hood. Right on. Awesome. Um, my pleasure. Any mesh. Have you used wizardry? Ever tapped in the, or dabbled in yeah, um, wizardry? Before client first, I was using wizardry, mm -hmm. um, and then I adopted client first, mm -hmm. and then like the client first fluid responsive, like ticked all the boxes for me. Um, right. Big fan of both Finsley and Timothy for sure, yeah. but I just it just fits into how I build now, and I don't use wizardry anymore. Mm -hmm. What about awesome. you, Josh? Have you tried wizardry? I was about to, and then yeah, client first came in, and I'm like, okay, this this makes a lot more sense. So, but I, I was setting it up. I think the thing because I was designing in Figma, and I had to make sure that my grid system, uh, you know, represented like the the rem conversion and all yeah. that. So, yeah, I think is a what ten grid system, um, because it's easier to like divide and stuff as opposed to a twelve grid. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it's 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 interesting that whole whole dynamic with like the fact that you can either use widgetry or client first. I feel like personally, I just feel like they achieve sort of similar things. Yeah, for sure. Awesome guys, 
Well, if you have any other questions, please let us know. Otherwise, I think this wraps it up. This is great. Yeah. Like, um, if you have any questions, I'm, I'm very open to showing you more of what's under the hood. Or, But if not, you can wrap it up. Great. Um, any lessons you want to summarize? Any nuggets of wisdom from today's stream? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think adopting the the habit of consuming world-class website design having like a i guess a source of inspiration mm -hmm. um and like there's a lot you can learn from websites on the internet um there's also a lot that you can learn on what not to do but there's a lot to learn uh if you study these websites and adopt you know the the, the tactics or the the approach that that they they use um and also to generate ideas and yeah i guess that's it i think that's like the key insight here and the design process is messy but i think in the future for future streams it'd be really cool to tap into other people's design process yeah uh, and because i think it, there's a lot to learn from each other for sure yeah we want to bring more people up on the stream so um jeremy had a great time so thank you my vancouver brother appreciate it uh yeah we're gonna um, we're gonna add the notion link in the description pierre amazing guy this guy is a pro in automation so if you guys need help with that um nice that's, he is like uh integramat master and then some yeah all nice. right guys nice spending morning with you guys thanks, mark. all right thanks mark all right guys thanks so much for joining us make sure to like let me put on, where's the music here? There you go. <laughs> Gotta have the nice outro vibes. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. Um, we'll see you next week on Thursdays, um, 7 o'clock Eastern time.